That's my classical lecture zero. <coughs> Make sure it's your class again. But derivatives, here they are. I already posted those notes and modules. I only need to confirm with you some things like what is, what is derivative of x? You can just yell if you want. Wow. One, very good. What is derivative of the constant? Zero. zero. But what if what is derivative of the constant plus constant times x? Or it's c. C, it's right? C so it's zero plus c. So zero for the first c, but then the second c survives because it's a rate. It's multiplied by a variable. That's that's the difference. That will be important. So yeah, no worries at all. Uh, this is the good opportunity for you to reflect on uh, gaps. Especially if you had a gap between um, calculus one and two, math goes away very fast, unfortunately. So even if we do, even when we do research in math, in one week we forget what was the last thing we did. It's just um, the structure of the material and knowledge in your brain. It disappears fast. Integrals. We're going to do lots of integrals for the whole month. We'll be doing lots of trigonometric functions and integrals. Yay! Uh, and the we learned last time in calculus one that we have indefinite integrals and definite integrals. Indefinite integrals do not have limits of integration defined. So we were looking for antiderivative integral of x n dx. Make sure your integral sign is beautiful. It's not this, and it's not a line. It's a beautiful s stretched it's beautiful it looks like this what is the integral of x to the n x to the mm, close but that's the other one n plus one over n plus one that one was a derivative something is missing plus c thank you that doesn't work if n is minus one if n is minus 1, then you have 1 over x case. That's a special case. That one gives you log x plus c. And someone mentioned absolute natural absolute. and absolute value. That is because x in the denominator can be negative, but x in the log cannot be negative. So absolute value fixes that. Very good. Good job, people. What is naked integral? I call it like this. It's not correct, but I like it. What does integral of nothing gives you? How do you know it's x plus c? Because there's a 1 inside. When there's nothing inside, actually it's 1. Nothing is actually 0. But in this case, it actually has something. That's a tricky part of it. So it is 1. Now, very good. Why? Because when you differentiate x, you get 1. Let's see if you remember tricks, your favorite ones. Integral of sine x. Before you yell at me, just a second, before you do that, let me mention that sine and cosine give each other when you differentiate and integrate. So I know that sine will become cosine and cosine becomes sine. Now it's the only thing to check is which one is negative. And you, I will let you know, I don't uh, rememorize that. I only remember one way, derivatives. And from derivatives, I know the integral. I differentiate cosine and I get negative. And that's how I know that the first one should be negative, right? Because when you differentiate, the negative pops up. But when I differentiate sine in the second line, it gives you plus cosine, so it matches. I highly recommend to save your memory, especially if you're an engineer. You'll have so many things to memorize already. So remember <coughs> the least you can do. <laughs> I do think so. Now, what gave me secant squared when I differentiated it? Tangent. Tangent. Very good. Plus C. Again, I don't remember the integral. I just remember derivative of tangent. When you differentiate tangent, it really likes secant. So it becomes secant squared. Mm -hmm. But when you differentiate secant, it likes itself. Do you know what I mean by that? What is inside of the integral? Secant tangent. Exactly. 
Sec unlikes itself, so it first puts itself and then tangent. So the integral of secant tangent gives you secant. Hopefully you remember that. How about this awkward ones? 1 over the square root. 1 minus x squared dx. Which one? Sec. Sec secant. No, close. Arc sine or arc secant. Ah, arc sec. Arc sec or arc sine. So that's the one you need to remember. If it's constant minus input squared, that is arc sine. And I'm checking just to make sure I'm not messing up myself. Arc sine, you can write down arc sine, or you can write down sine minus 1. That is the same thing. Sine minus 1x. That is the inverse of sine. So sine minus 1 reserved for the inverse functions. It's not 1 over sine. Correct. This will be important. We'll be working with this uh, for like two weeks. 1 over 1 plus x squared. That's the easy one. Arc tangent, right? I'll write down tangent minus 1 because it's faster to write. Arc tangent. Inverse of tangent. Good job. Finally, your favorite ones. What is the integral of e to the x? Yay, e to the x. Very nice. e to the x gives you e to the x until we go to multivariable calculus, calculus 3. But actually, it has a general formula. a to the x dx. I remember we were torturing you on the tests for that. And I don't remember we're going to be doing it ever again. So we just need you to know that there is a general case. Copy, divide by the natural log of the base. So the first formula actually has it is divided by natural log of the e. But natural log of the e is 1, so it's not there. So the first formula comes from the general formula. Interestingly, we never actually find out what was the integral of log because it requires integration by parts, which is 6.1. We're going to learn it next week. We're going to integrate log next week on Monday. Interestingly, there's more functions we never integrated. How about tangent? Why we integrated so many things, like sine, cosine, secant squared, but we never integrated tangent, for example. Is it one of the basics? Yeah, you need to use u substitution, which we learn on Wednesday. And so on. We need to know more ways to integrate stuff in order to go to applied physics, engineering, you know, gravitational forces. All of them has different integrals, different motions. We need to know more techniques. So the whole month, the first exam is all about integration techniques. That's the whole chapter. Definite integrals means the limits of integrations are defined. Integral from A to B. Make sure your integral sign is beautiful. Every time I grade you exams, they, some of them just look so ugly. You can even put little dots if you want. Then it's going to be printed beautiful. F of x dx Definite integral is, first fundamental theorem of calculus says, you find antiderivative, plug the top, and by the top I mean upper limit of integration, minus the bottom lower limit of integration, where f prime gives you f, small f. So it's antiderivative. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. That's a brilliant result, which was one of the most important results in mathematics and in science in general, is this small equal sign between antiderivatives. Oh, what gave me 2x? Oh, it was x squared originally. That's antiderivative. And then the idea of a definite integral, so many applications, Riemann sums, areas, and so on. So that is important. We're going to be doing that quite a lot. Remember, the result of indefinite integral was a function. Every time I integrate, I get a function. e to the x is a function. Now, the answer will be a number. We're talking about some stuff, quantity, area between graphs, 55.7. Double integral gives you volume. Triple integral gives you hypervolume. We're going to do it in calculus 3. So it should be a finite thing. That's important to understand as well. Let's practice a little bit.
integral from 0 to 2. 2x cubed minus 6x plus 3 over x squared plus 1. Do people at the back can hear me well? Can you see well? Yes. Good. Good. There's also seats here. But I'm glad the people left the front seats open in case someone needs the disability seats for sure. We always have someone who breaks legs in the middle of the semester because of the skateboards. Let's do it. Integral of 2x cubed gives me... You can yell. Especially if you're at the back. Don't you want to yell a little bit to wake up? 2x cubed gives me x to the 4 over 2. Why? Because it's 2x to the 4 over 4. Good job. Wow. That was not nice. Fix it back. 2 over 4. x to the 4 over 4. Power rule. Minus 6x becomes? Exactly. x squared over 2, which is 3x squared. Good job. 3 over x squared plus 1 gives you? 3 what? 3 sine inverse. Sine tangent. When there's no root, that's tangent. No square root. I mean. Tangent or arc tangent. Arc tangent. Do we agree on that? So that's when you need to know it well. And again, the first lecture is A, to kind of freak you out a little bit, and B, to tell you that you have two days to review it. It's okay to feel behind, especially if you had a gap. But you need to catch up, reflect on this, study. I posted some videos to review, practice those little exams I posted. They're very nice. They give you solutions. You're ready. So you need to just put a little bit more effort than other people who just had this class and they remember it. Instead of plus C, I put brackets. Some people put parentheses or nothing. Bar from 0 to 2. Plus C gives you the function. So that's indefinite integral. A bar from 0 to 2 is a definite integral. It gives you a number at the end. You plug top 2 everywhere first. And then you plug minus and 0 everywhere. So let's simplify. It's going to be 2 to the 4 over 2 minus 3 2 squared plus 3 arctangent at 2. Don't forget parentheses or brackets because of the negative sign. If you forget parentheses or brackets, you will mess up the sign, which happens often, unfortunately. Plug zero everywhere. Now I'm plugging zero. So it's always big minus small. So that's why it's a difference from two. That's exactly how English sounds. From two, that's a difference. Zero minus zero plus three arctangent zero you simplify and you get the answer and the answer is a number how to know what a tangent of zero is that's a nice reminder for you la, 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 la. i have in my notes i have all the solutions collect the terms you got it arctangent or tangent minus one let's do this what is arc what is tangent money minus one of zero i don't know question mark inverse functions work this way Arc tangent of zero is unknown. That means that tangent of unknown is zero. Tangent of what angle gave me zero? Zero and others. Good job. It's actually infinitely many. But for inverse functions, we restrict the domain often from minus pi over two to pi over two, but actually not always. You should check sine and cosine. So I'm choosing the one in the domain, which is zero. Does it make sense? Same with arc sine, arc cosine, but the same is with logarithms as well. Just to remind you, that's called inverse, inverse functions. That's how you can answer those questions. Let's do one more with logs and e. Two, integral from one to e, seven, e to the x, minus eight over x, plus two, dx equals 
In your homework right now, post it, there is a review, calculus one review. That's not for the grade. I'm not gonna be putting it to, into the grade book. But I recommend it though. It's in web work. Someone made it for you, so it should be useful. Seven e to the x gives you seven e to the x. Very convenient. Minus eight over x is absolute value of x. Amazing. Very good people. Very good. Two gives you two x bar or parentheses uh, brackets or parentheses bar from one to e. Just like before, you plug E everywhere. Minus, you plug 1 everywhere. 7 E to the E, that's a number. It's like 2.7 something something raised to the 2.7 something something. Minus 8 ln of E. But what is ln of E? 1. Because it's an inverse function of exponential, you can ask yourself, E to what power gives you E? 1. Plus 2e. Parentheses are important. Minus is important. Parentheses, again, are important. I always put minus in the next line as well. And you plug 1 everywhere. 7e to the 1 minus 8 ln 1 plus 2. What is ln of 1? 0. Because you can ask the question, e to what power give you, gives you 1? It is 0. Let me write it down. And again, it's a number, so you co you collect terms, you get the answer. So logarithms and exponential functions are going to be very important as well. That's why I'm going to write down the definition for you in case you forgot. Y equals a to the x. That's an exponential function. Can be converted into log using inverse functions. Log the base. A stays the base, whatever was isolated, which means on the other side of the equal sign. So Y was standing by itself, isolated, will be now inside of the function. Whatever was not isolated will be isolated. Inverse function switches X and Y. The whole point of inverse is solve for the input. So I just solved for X. That's how you can solve lots of things. Thus, ln of e, question mark, answers the question, e to what power is e? And the answer is 1. So that's how we did it. Formulas like these, very nice. Now, what do you think about this? How cool is that? So again, if you, how do you feel it? Good? Yeah, good, okay, okay is good too. Bad is fine too, you just need to make sure you catch up. We'll be doing lots of, lots of stuff right after this on Wednesday, which requires you to be good at this. And definitely don't forget to review the table of derivatives. But derivatives, they kind of pop out fast in your brain. When we're gonna be doing them in class, it will catch up fast. Integrals and tricks are the ones that are confusing for most of the people. Finally, for the last thing, for like seven minutes, I can tell you this. That's going to be important for Wednesday. If I have a random function, let's have, for example, x squared. We're going to talk about law. x squared plus 5x minus 3. I need you to know how to copy-paste things inside of any function for Wednesday classes and everything after that. And calculus 3 will have it a lot. For example, what is f of u squared minus 5. So it's important to understand what is happening. Everywhere you have input x, now it, ha it has a new input, u squared minus 5. So you copy u squared minus 5 and paste it everywhere you see x. That is important. So I have parentheses. Instead of saying x, I will say input. Input squared plus 5, input minus 3. Input is u squared minus 5. So I will have input squared, right? New input squared plus 5 times new input. That's called composition of functions. When we have an, one function inside of the another function. Does it make sense? There's a function in the code. 
called find and replace, right? That's exactly what we're doing. We're telling us or computer, find X, replace with a new input. We will be doing this a lot. So make sure you just remember this idea of what if I want to plug law? It's exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's ridiculous or not. What matters is if it's in a domain. You cannot plug number of grandmothers into the number of t-shirts at the store. The domain have to match each other. So it also have to make sense. You cannot plug centimeters into liters. But say I can plug love. Then it's going to be love squared, right? Plus 5 love minus 3. Just remember this funny idea. No matter what it is, we can plug it in. Because after all, a function is like a machine. The function f of x is a rule. That's what we teach in pre-calculus class. It's a rule, some kind of rule. In this case, this rule says, let me write down, it's a rule. This rule says, take my input, and I'll be using this terminology a lot. That's domain, right? Domain. Domain means allowed variables or allowed inputs. Take your input, work it out in this machine, and in this case, it is square it, multiply by five, add up together, subtract, subtract three, and then give me the result, which we're gonna call output range. So that's gonna be important too. Where is the range? And the result is called f of x. So x was changed or not, if it's a constant function was changed and gave me another output. So that's going to be very important. We will be working with lots of integrals inside of the other functions and so on. As you can understand, if I ask you to plug some kind of integral inside of the function, my computer is not, no, I don't want to plug integral inside of the function. I'm glitching. Some integral 7dx inside of the function, guess what you do that? You do this input squared plus five input minus three. It's the same thing. So it doesn't matter what you plug, you can do it if it's in a domain. So that's how awesome it's going to be. And many applications have that. Many applications have complicated stuff inside of the complicated stuff. So slowly we're getting into multivariable calculus when we're gonna be working with different variables We'll be working with not just three domains and three domain dimensions with three domains. We'll be working with four domains and seven and so on. So it's all slowly getting into that level when you finally will understand rocket science. That's why it's a funny phrase. You know, it's not rocket science yet, but we're getting there. To understand rocket science, the space, and microbiology, that's my specialty. I worked in mathematical modeling of microbiology and epidemic spreads. All of this has lots of stuff in stuff. And that means when you differentiate something, chain rule un unfolds. When you integrate something, we need to know how to undo chain rule, and we're going to learn it on Wednesday. How to undo product rule, we're going to learn it on Friday. How to work with trigonometric functions, right triangle is coming, and lots of fun stuff. So that's kind of the idea of this class. Good job, people, for coming. Don't be late on Wednesday. Ask me questions right now. Have a good day. Don't get cold. The whole week is very cold. Mm -hmm.